The topic of this course is understanding the specifications of analog to digital converters. They say we are living in the digital age, but the world is still analog. Therefore, to make complex decisions, we need microcontrollers and the data needs to be in digital form. In a typical signal chain, the front end and back end are analog signals. As a result, we need an ADC to convert the analog signal to digital for processing. The digital to analog converter, or DAC, is its counterpart at the back end, which converts the processed digital data back to analog. This is a typical analog to digital conversion flow. The analog input signal goes through a process called sampling in which the continuous signal becomes discrete values when the sample switch is closed. These discrete values will subsequently be turned into numbers, or quantized. These numbers will be encoded into digital bits to be sent to the microcontroller for processing. To avoid a phenomenon called aliasing, which is an effect that can cause the signal to become distorted when sampled, the signal has to go through a filter to limit its bandwidth to half of the sampling frequency. This filter is called an anti-aliasing filter. In general, most designers are concerned about a specific set of primary criteria when selecting an analog to digital converter. A specification such as power consumption may be very important when designing a next generation portable low power data acquisition system. However, the majority of the time, engineers start looking at parts based on the following specifications. Resolution. This is the number of bits needed. Digital interface, such as SPI, I squared C, parallel, etc. ADC performance, such as INL, DNL, offset, gain error, ENOB, SFDR, THD, etc. The speed of conversion required, which leads to the ADC structure or architecture. The power supply range required by the ADC. Secondary selection criteria usually include power consumption considerations, including active and sleep modes, and reference voltage integration. They also frequently include system-friendly features, such as an integrated FIFO for the digital data, an integrated programmable gain amplifier, also known as a PGA, or a general-purpose I.O. connected to the serial bus. The resolution of an ADC determines how many parts the maximum input signal can be divided into. The higher the resolution, the more numbers there are to represent the analog signal, which makes the process more precise. Quantization error is the error that occurs when the sampled analog signal turns into numbers. The higher the number of bits, the lower the quantization error. In a sampling system, the LSB, or least significant bit, is defined as the smallest step size achievable. Therefore, an LSB is calculated as the full scale voltage of the input signal divided by 2 to the power of n, which is the resolution of the ADC. In an ideal analog to digital converter, every step change is an LSB or least significant bit. As mentioned in the previous slide, it is the maximum input voltage divided by 2 to the power of n where N is the resolution of the ADC. Any deviation from this ideal step is called differential nonlinearity. In, in an ADC, if this error is less than plus or minus one LSB, then the ADC will not have missing codes. Unlike other errors such as offset or gain, this error cannot be calibrated out. Integral nonlinearity is the accumulation of all DNL errors. It is the maximum deviation from the ideal slope of the ADC. The error is described in number of LSBs 
or percentage of full-scale range. There are two common references from which to measure the INL deviation. The best fit straight line and the endpoint INL. The best fit straight line INL provides information about offset or intercept and gain error or slope, as well as the position of the transfer function. It determines, in the form of a straight line, the closest approximation to the ADC's actual transfer function. The endpoint INL passes a straight line through the endpoints of the converter's transfer function, thereby defining a precise position for the line. Thus, the straight line for an n-bit ADC is defined by its zero, or all zeros, and its full scale, or all ones, outputs. The INL affects the true resolution of an ADC. Effective number of bits, or ENOB, is a measure of an ADC's signal-to-noise ratio and distortion. It is an AC performance specification, and is an alternative way of stating another term called signal-to-noise and distortion, or SINAD. In an ADC of n-bit resolution, ENOB is equal to n, which is equal to the signal-to-noise ratio, minus 1.76 dB, and divided by 6.02 dB. This comes from an equation that lets us predict SNR for a sine wave input based only on the ideal quantization noise for an n-bit converter. But in a real system, the ADC is subjected to other noise sources besides the quantization noise. These are the clock jitter noise, analog noise, total harmonic distortion, etc. Thus, the effective number of bits is always smaller than the resolution N of the ADC, because ENOB should be calculated using the SINAD in place of the SNR in the equation shown here. Total harmonic distortion, THD, is the ratio of the root sum square of all harmonic distortion components relative to full-scale signal in RMS. Practically, people use the sum of the first 10 harmonics as the total. Spurious free dynamic range is the ratio of the amplitude of the fundamental frequency to the amplitude of the largest harmonic or spurious signal component observed over the full bandwidth. In a communication system, this specification defines the capability of the ADC to decipher a carrier signal from other noise or any other spurious frequency. Offset error, often called zero scale error, indicates how well the actual transfer function matches the ideal transfer function at a single point. For an ideal data converter, the first transition occurs at 0 0.5 LSB above zero. For an ADC, the zero scale voltage is applied to the analog input and is increased until the first transition occurs. The gain error of an ADC indicates how well the slope of an actual transfer function matches the slope of the ideal transfer function. Gain error is usually expressed in LSB, or as a percentage of full-scale range, or FSR, and it can be calibrated out with hardware or calibrated in with software. Gain error is the full-scale error minus the offset error. The input signal of an ADC can be either single-ended or differential. For single-ended signals, it can be unipolar or bipolar. The unipolar input ranges from zero scale, typically ground, to full scale, typically the reference voltage. The bipolar signal swings above and below ground. An ADC with pseudo-differential inputs digitizes the differential analog input voltage, known as AN plus and AN minus, over a limited range. The AN plus input has the actual analog input signal, while the AN minus input has a restricted range. A unipolar signal has voltage swings from zero to full scale, while bipolar signals have voltage swings 
from below to above ground. Fully differential inputs do not have a limited range, like the pseudo-differential type. Both the AN plus and AN minus have the same range, but expect the two signals to be complementary, 180 degrees out of phase, to maximize the dynamic range. The key advantage of using differential input signals, beside increased dynamic range, is noise rejection. Pseudo-differential inputs are similar to fully differential inputs in that they separate signal ground from ADC ground, allowing DC common mode voltages to be cancelled. However, they have little effect on dynamic common mode noise like fully differential. There are many different types or architectures of ADC, with trade-offs varying between speed, resolution, and power consumption. The flash architecture is ultra-high speed, but with high power consumption. Pipeline ADCs can go to 100 mega samples per second, 8 to 16 bits, and have lower power consumption than flash. Flash and pipeline ADCs are typically used in high-speed data acquisition, radar systems, and digital RF signal processing. Successive approximation, or SAR, architectures typically have a resolution from 8 to 16 or more bits, with a speed up to 5 mega samples per second and low power. They are typically found in applications such as programmable logic controllers, test and measurement, and medical instruments. Sigma Delta or Delta Sigma architecture is intended for applications that require high resolution but at low speeds, such as weighing scales, temperature sensors, and portable instrumentation. For precision applications, the most popular ADCs are Sigma Delta and SAR. This chart summarizes the speed and resolution that Maxim offers. Thank you for watching this video. In this course, we have talked about the A to D conversion process, the top criteria in selecting an ADC, the key specifications and different types of ADC and their applications. For more information, please go to our website at www.maximintegrated.com under products, analog and data converters. We hope you enjoyed this video and see you again in another educational video of Maxim Integrated.